Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here covering the League of Averages. This video is going to cover scenarios that happen to everyone, how these excuses are literally with enough games completely made, and what degree excuses are only really pandering to your sense of pride and how they don't really help. This video should give you some mental motivation to improve in League and from there hopefully gain some elo. Okay, so let's cover some scenarios. I'll explain my last 20 games or so and what afflictions happened to me. So basically anything bad that happened will be noted down. So do you remember these as I will be noting them all later on in contradiction. Number one, I just lost the promo game because of an AFK. So once the one guy AFK, we lost a couple of lanes and then everyone AFK from there, so it's an immediate loss. Number two, I lost two games because every lane but mine fed. For the first game, I went 5-0, top went 0-7 and bot went 0-6 combined. The jungler went 1-5 throughout the laning phase and of course from there we lost. From the second game, I free farmed as Vanguard, I got tons of passive stacks, 3-0 in my lane going for roams, making a couple of pickups in the enemy jungler by myself, but it didn't really matter, the rest of the team didn't get a single kill, uh, they died quite a bit, they had half the CS of the enemy team, and for the most part their scores were minus 4 to minus 6 onwards. Number 3, I lost another game due to everyone but myself spending more time typing than actually playing. I would say infernoing, uh, not really flaming, but of course that's not really a word. Number four, I played a game earlier where I got matched with far higher ELO skill based players than myself and my team. The entire team was versus mid diamonds and we were all low to medium to high uh, base platinums, which of course is an unfair matchup. I ganked a lot as the jungler, I got a couple of kills as a tank jungler, I should get most of the team's kills, but in the end I'm only a tank jungler, I should have maybe sacrificed them up and from that the rest of the lanes just couldn't really cope up and they all lost. The matchmaking was pretty far off, we got stomped. Number 5, I lost the lane where I got camped hard cell by an enemy team and of course the jungler not only had a tent but a stove to cook my ass over when he got a kill. I lost 0-3 in the lane, I fed, I didn't get that much done, I didn't get much CS and my team of course completely blamed me. Number 6, my enemy got very powerful or cliche OP champions over power champions. In the current patch that's a really a misfortune in Swain but you can apply this to your current patch in the future. We didn't get any, we just got normal run of the mill champions and all of them uh, on a universal spectrum have a below 50% win rate. So before I go into the retort on this we have to go for an important point. Yes these scenarios are bad and a little gut wrenching but I never really put them out of proportion. The problem with humans is we don't properly accept negative and positive feelings on an equilateral basis. We basically feel that one is more potent than the other. Guess which one? There's research done on the topic and it rose to the theory called the Lasada Ratio. This is basically the ratio you need to keep a healthy mindset in terms of economic improvement. So essentially how to do well at work and make lots of money. But also shows that positive negative feelings work in a ratio 3 to 1. So for every one negative thought or action we need 3 positive ones to equalize it in our head. The concept is explained as follows. The correct mix for maintaining productivity is three positive comments for each negative comment. This formula, also known as the Lasada Ratio, is named after Dr. Marcella Lasada, who studied the interplay of positive interactions and economic well-being, essentially making money. According to researchers, the Lasada Ratio of three positives for every negative feedback appears to be the minimum necessary to achieve, and I'm adding this in, maintain high performance. This easily correlates to League of Legends as well. One AFK on my team means I feel bad until I get a massive 3 on the enemy side. This means that as humans we don't look at bad scenarios in a fair fashion, we expect things to go our way or we get pretty irritated. This is the main reason why the vast majority of League of Legends populace feels that they and only they get more AFKers than everyone else. This is why you feel like you always get feeders on your team. I know as a matter of fact that I carried 3 of my games recently in a row. Three full games. I, I done well. I mean, I farmed. I didn't do amazing. I got like a kill, maybe minus one during the lane, but, but I got CS. I, I, I done okay. But the rest of my team dominated. I, I just done okay to get well. I got carried straight up, man. Then I got two games where my team did kind of poorly. And I was really angry. I was like, oh my god, I never get good teammates. And, and at that point, I was like, wait. And then I stopped myself and I remembered, I, I, get, I got carried, I got free low, like straight up free low from other people and I lost two games then from there I got equal. So at the end of the day, I didn't really associate it properly there. It's easy even for the most logical mind and I feel I'm pretty logical to forget these things. So the next time you get two FKs in a row, remember that the 30 games you didn't get them doesn't really equate to the two you did. 3 to 1 is the ratio to remember and of course kind of spite, try to avoid it. So back to the bad scenarios I've had recently, remember the Lasada ratio for this as well. 
So I've been a little unlucky. Let's cut straight to the middle of why this unlucky streak doesn't really matter in the slightest when you look at it logically. The reason for this is simple. For these bad scenarios, I had good ones in my past 20 games. I have a good memory, so I'll show the counters of these points beside the ones, and you'll basically be able to directly look and see the counter and the problem beside each other to really see that they do equate in the end. Number one, I got a free win around 20 games from an AFK. I got a free win, they got it, and they got a free win. I've won tons of AFK matches since playing since the beta. And yes, I've lost a few as well, but as memory goes, it's about even. Mathematically speaking, if you play enough games, everyone should end up with a very close to the same amount of AFK games. Assuming AFKs are generally a static number, and for the most part, although variable, I feel it's not too, the variance isn't too crazy. Over a large sample size, everyone should have close to the same amount of AFKs. Number two, I've won tons of games when my team done amazingly and straight up carried my heavy ass or carried my mediocre ass and then from there I also carry my teammates. Sometimes. <laughs> You're not the best player in the world. Even the best do need carried sometimes. Faker every single game does not one man carry. He has some bad plays. He has some bad games. Although they're rare because he's a good player. He does lose eventually. He does get unlucky scenarios eventually. He does maybe uh, not do perform perfectly every game and sometimes, yes sometimes, even he loses lane. There's nothing wrong with this, feeders basically happen. Sometimes people can affect you and at the end of the day, Faker will eventually be carried more than he is carrying. And again, that, that's not a problem, you can't carry every game, no one is that consistent, no one gets that great matchup, no one gets all these perfect scenarios in one go. There's nothing wrong with this, feeders happen to you, Feeders happen to Faker, feeders happen to everyone. The difference is how you deal with it. Remember that although you may get uh, tons of games where your team's not doing well, on the enemy side, you're also going to have tons of games where your team does do well. And although you don't want to admit it, you will believe, and you, if you think back recently, there's been a few games you're the one not performing, you're the one not doing well. And at the end of the day, it equalizes out eventually. Number three, flamers. Same deal. Around 50% of my games will, are full of people who focus or only give hard information or flash timers, positioning, objective calls. And this, everyone goes, oh, that, that's, that's unlikely. That doesn't sound right. Think about your games. How often do you get tons of flamers, like a full team of people raging? I, honestly, I, I barely even notice them anymore. Most of my games are neutral, so they don't say anything, which this is fine. To helpful in chat. Um, recently it's been around 50%, but normally it's around 20-30% of very helpful people, then 20% of decent people, and around 40% of neutral people who are just there. And that's not really a problem, only t about 10% approximately are flamers to me. And I get one flamer, and if I'm really unlucky I get a team's worth, but I'll admit, I notice this far more than my positive games. That's a 10 to 1 ratio. I actually think, I, I used to think I got flamers uh, last season, I was like, wait, when was the last time I seen one, about 6 games ago? That's, that's not really a big deal, or... 10 games ago, 20 games ago, and at the end of the day, I feel toxicity in the league has recently been reduced, so this isn't really an issue. It's pretty crazy what your mind can do for me to think a 10 to 1 ratio is bad. Number 4, the same day I got matched with medium goals versus my medium to high plat team. We absolutely stomped them. I mean, proper abused the game and annihilated each and every lane. I ended the game with 1 3 18 as a tank jungler. I was tanking the double turrets as a moo moo, jumping into the fountain. That's the reason why I've got any deaths at all. Going ham for the rest of my team, and some of them got some disgusting sco scores for the full tank. One unfair, one fair. Um, at the end, it worked out. Number 5, I lost my lane but carried the game in the end by continuing to farm as Vagar for that example previously. But literally one game before that, my jungler camped me and I got massive. I got fed and fed and fed because I was the one who got to camp the enemy. The enemy leader camped this lane this time. I got literally zero ganks against me the entire game. At the end of the day, sometimes you get camped. Other times, you don't get ganked at all and if you're really lucky, your jungler camps for you. Don't feel attacked, don't feel that, oh my god, it's so unfair, look at this, the jungler's on my ass. At the end of the day, remember, 3 to 1, this ratio is something you have to try and remove from your head. It doesn't matter how many times your jungler ganks for you, or how many they don't gank for you. The absence is not really an indicative of anything, really. You don't deserve ganks, you're not, you don't command the jungler, you don't command the enemy jungler. Sometimes you're going to get ganked, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you get lucky, so those games you don't get any ganks towards you. Let me guess, you forget those games though, right? I know I do, I'll be admit, um, I do forget those games. The games I get camped, I feel really good, and then one game I get camped, I get really angry. And I, again, recently, the past two seasons or so, I've stopped doing this, I just, I kind of understand that's how the game goes. And I think that's a really good mindset to have. 
Number six, my enemy got a lot of OP picks, but hell, I sh should have banned already. I got a ban and I used it in Vlad instead. Uh, it's kind of annoying that my team didn't pick anything or ban anything conventionally stronger and just didn't use the bans right. One person banned said, I still don't know why people do this, but I digress. A few games before I comped a uh, double, what, what, what I've dubbed, Team Scum OP. We, we, we got so many ridiculously strong picks right now, all far above 50% win ratios, which of course aren't indicative of the strength of a champion, just say they are. They are stronger on a general basis. Uh, we conquered with an early advantage, and but at the end of the day, it, it's about how you play, not the picks. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to give you an overview here. Sometimes you get shit comps, sometimes you get great comps, sometimes you're in the middle. It really does equalize out in the wrong run. It's just the problem. The problem is some games you don't have a tank and you get really irritated by it. And the next game, the enemy don't have a tank, but you completely forget that because you're winning. I'm sure you're sick of hearing it by now, but I'm sorry. The truth is the truth. Shit happens to every player in the game to around an equal ratio. Now, some people are a little bit statistically oddballs, and both ways. Some people are very lucky, some people are unfortunate. And, you know, you do have exceptions to mathematical rules, but at the end of the day, it's not really too bad, especially with a game of such a very League of Legends, you know? You may be on a lucky streak, but for that, the law of averages means you get a lucky streak after. This also explains massive win and massive loss ratios, on top of psychological factors like your confidence. The world normally naturally counters itself, and in math, this is more true. Hopefully this video has shown you the natural law of averages and your own interpretation of any bad game as generally equalized with good ones. Do not let that one bad game be the 3 to 1 ratio. Don't let it. Just say it's a bad game and then from there play onwards. This isn't 100% fair. The game will never be 100% fair. But at the end of the day, that's the fun of it. Sometimes you get good games, sometimes you get bad games, and sometimes it's a really close match and it's great. You've just got to accept the good and the bad and just play the game the best you can. You can't control these variables, there's no point and getting angry about them. The law of averages always comes true. And that's it for the video guys. If you like it, like it, dislike it, dislike it. If you like the content, you can subscribe. If you think it's horrible and totally trash here, and I'm totally wrong, you can unsub it. I'm totally fair. I also stream at Twitch TV guys. The link will be in the low bar. I love to see there. I bring educational and fun content as well. And beyond that guys, have a great day. Best luck in the rift. And I'll see you guys next time.